Well, this will be the first action I'm taking in preparation for installing my horizontal boring mill. Um, we're looking at it right now is the outline of on the floor of where my horizontal milling machine used to sit. And that's where my horizontal boring mill is gonna be once it arrives. So far, I've just removed the milling machine horizontal mill is just sitting over there for now temporarily out of the way we've cleared this area out mopped the floor and then laid out with a black marker you can kind of see the lines there the outline of the foundation I want to make for it and it's a it's a rectangle about nine feet wide and 11 feet long and in a couple of hours, a guy is going to show up with a, a concrete saw. We're going to cut that out and we'll lift it out with the loader we have here. And then in a, we'll dig that down about three feet. And then put three layers of steel in. And then pour a pad about, uh, well, about three feet thick. And just make it flush with the existing shop floor. So it'll just look like a new patch in the shop floor and that should give me a sufficient foundation for the the boring mill that I have coming. Anyways this is the first step and hopefully it goes well. Back up a bit, yeah. Good, up, up. Back a bit. Good. Well, it's the morning of the pour for the foundation for the boring mill 
Um, a few days ago, we finished digging the hole and putting the steel in. Um, the steel is 5 8 diameter rebar. I've got it on 12 inch centers and I've got three layers. So it's approximately about a, a foot in every dimension, roughly. And then I have a, a bunch of upright pieces that just tie the three layers together and act as legs to hold the, the, uh, the cage essentially at the right elevation. I've got it set to about well, about three inches below the top of the floor, the top layer, so nothing will stick out. Um, was, uh, I was very pleased with the results of the digging. Um, you can see uh, when the shop was made, uh, they put a lot of base under it. There's about a foot of three quarter inch down limestone that was packed very well. It was almost like trying to dig concrete. And below that is about another 12 inches of six inch down limestone base, which was packed just as well. And then to get to the 36 inch depth that I wanted, uh, we went through about six inches of uh, kind of a silty clay. Um, the clay is fairly dry and it is um, in situ, meaning that uh, it's never been disturbed. It's just how it was when it was laid down, I don't know, thousands of years ago, I guess. And that type of clay will be packed uh, tighter than you could pack it with a like a vibrating um, plate pack or anything like that. So when we uh, when we excavated it, we used a bucket without teeth, and we just skimmed the last few inches off so we didn't disturb the clay. I wanted it to remain again in situ the way it was laid down without uh, messing up the top and having to pack it. The first time I jumped down in the hole to do a bit of work, uh, the clay was so hard it, it felt like jumping on a concrete floor. And not that they would probably show up that well anyways, but uh, my brother and I worked down in this hole for probably close to an hour trimming edges and stuff. And, you know, digging our, our you know, pushing hard on our work boots and that to push the spades through the, the hard clay. And I cannot see any footprints in this clay, despite the fact we're wearing work boots with a heel and a tread pattern. There's no footprints in this clay, which gives an indication how hard it is. Um, so that's exactly what I was hoping for. It's, uh, the foundation is going to be thick and stiff, three feet thick. There's quite a bit of steel in it, and it'll be sitting on a very solid base. Um, so I don't expect to get any movement. Um, the shop has got a weeping tile all the way around it, so I don't think the moisture content of this clay will ever change. The water can't get to it. And we, you know, this is Canada. One killer up here or any cold climate is the freeze thaw cycle, which causes stuff to heave in the winter. Uh, we won't have that either because the shop is heated. It'll never freeze. So I think I'm going to end up with a very solid foundation for my boring mill. And in a few hours, the first truck's going to show up and we're going to pour approximately nine cubic meters of concrete, which I think works out to about, should end up being somewhere around 50,000 pounds of concrete. And that's gonna support the weight of a 20,000 pound machine. So it should be, should be good. It'd be a lot better than the original floor anyways.